please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. When you do, don't forget to click on all. Because if you don't, you might not get notified of all of the videos. So make sure you click on all. And don't forget in the comp in the description area, please consider contributing to this particular ministry, either through Patreon or else through the PayPal. Both links are in the description box. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, and to our lost brothers and sisters in Islam, and to everybody else that is watching, and yes, that does include you, Mr. and Miss Atheist. Most Muslim arguments are generally the same, and so that is the first several videos that I am going to be concentrating on are the ones that I have argued in four of the Facebook pages that I am a member of that is a Christian versus Islam type chat rooms. I have been dealing with a bunch of Muslims for the last three plus years and this video is being made July of 2021. I do not remember the exact date that I have started, but it seems to be the same arguments over and over. So that is what these first several videos are going to be over, is how we as Christians can argue away their beliefs. But keep in mind that we need to try to do it in Christian love. Opening up the door so that when they are finally ready to leave Islam, they have someone to turn to. You are Welcome to take a screenshot of the verses that I am going to be using, which will be the second slide, and then we will jump right into looking at the actual verses that the second slide shows. This chat or not chat room <laughs> this YouTube channel isn't just looking at Islam but we are going to be looking at science we are going to be looking at the history of Islam versus the history of Christianity we are going to take a look at the archaeological artifacts of the two, well, okay, maybe not of the two, because there really isn't that many artifacts for Islam. The few that there are, Muslims don't want us to know about. And I will be pointing those out, but there is a lot more archaeological evidence for the Bible 
as compared to, well, the Quran. And, of course, we should know that the scientific process is observable, testable, and repeatable. We should look at these, this step, or these steps, when we look at not just science, but anything in life. If we cook with two cloves of garlic, and that is the perfect amount, why should we add more the next time? Or if it's too strong, then we go down to one clove. And that is the perfect amount, and therefore we keep with that one clove observable, testable, repeatable. This is a process we can use in many aspects of life. Dr. Yasser Khadi said there is holes in the narrative, and that's what we are going to test. Can, uh, is it observable? Can we test it? And is it repeatable? Well, yes, it is observed, it is testable, and we can repeat it. So, let us proceed on with today's topic. Okay, like I said in the introduction video, I will be critiquing other things than Islam. And this is the first of those kinds of videos. Today, we are going to debunk a very good pastor that is excellent in defending the young earth creationism. He is top-notch. No one can, can beat him when it comes to defending the young earth creation. And that is Dr. Kent Holbein. Some of you may not like where he got one of his doctorate degrees, but since then he has received a couple more. So, yes, he is a doctor, and he has said many times, you don't have to call him doctor, you can call him Kent, you can call him Mr. Holbein, you can call him Bubba, you can call him Hey You. He doesn't care. Let's get to the issue of the debate. In other words, when he is debating the that of the uh, atheists, they sometimes start calling him names. They start trying to say that his one of his doctorates is not a legitimate doctorate. And so that is why he says that. He doesn't care what you call him. Let's just get to debating the issue at, hi at hand. But I still call him Dr. Holbein because he has earned more than one. And he is an expert in young earth creationism like I am an expert in Bible prophecy. I am only a pro when it comes to 
defending young earth creationism. I have learned a lot from Kent Holbein, and I hope to learn even more from Kent. But there's one thing that I have noticed that he is wrong about. And he believes that the church will be going through the Great Tribulation. He gets this idea primarily from Matthew 24. But when you do not properly dispensate, I think it's Matthew 24, let me look. Let's close that. Um, it is either Matthew 23 or 24. Let's see. Well, yeah, it is Matthew 24. All right. He gets the idea from Matthew 24, but when you do not properly dispensate at which that is also in the Bible telling us that we need to properly divide and let me show you the verse uh oh Oh, maybe it's not divide, it's dividing. Huh. Okay. Yeah, right here. Study to show thyself a proof unto God, a workman that neither not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Oh, okay, that is why it didn't find it. But that of the concept of dispensation is in the Bible. Right here, even though the word itself, dispensation, is not in the Bible, the concept is rightly dividing the word of truth. Who was Jesus speaking to in Matthew 24? The Jews. The Jews was asking, when is the sign of his second coming? Okay. There is a difference between the rapture and the second coming. They are not synonymous. Revelation 19 talks about his second coming coming. Let me pull the e-sword back up. And there are three spots, or two other spots that says that we will, or that there are other people in heaven. Uh, I need to close this. The seven seals, and then, wait a minute, six. Is it, yeah, it is, re, it is Revelation to heaven, and here we find that after the 144,000 is sealed, after this I beheld, and a, lo, a great multitude, which no man could count, of all nations and kindred and people. John didn't say that they were angels. He said they were people. Okay. So... In Revelation 7, we see 
people in heaven. This is a rapture. Remember that uh, let me think where it is. Okay, first Thessalonians four sixteen and seventeen. Okay, let's go to it. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of oops, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay, up until that point, all of the saints, all of the Christians, all of the Hebrews that has been cleansed in from the Old Testament covenant will rise at the same time. There is only two humans in heaven, Elijah and Enoch. Those are the two that did not die. Everybody else is in the grave. And then we which are alive and remaineth shall be caught up with them in the clouds. You see this? With them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, notice what is happening here. We meet our Lord in the air. Revelation 19, Jesus' feet touches down on the earth. These are two separate events. Two separate events. Now, I'm going to show you something that I tend to right now have a little bit of a hard time explaining, but I think I have an idea. Chapters 4 through 7 overlay chapters 8 through 13. Like as the 4 through 7 and 8 through 13 um, ends up happening simultaneously. As that of chapter 4, okay, maybe not be 13, as chapter 4 is being done, so is chapter 8. Because here is the Lamb and the 144,000 again. Okay. So, where is it? The harvest of the earth in chapter 14. <clears throat> Let's take a look at what it says. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud upon the cloud, one sat like unto the Son of Man, Jesus having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thirst in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for, for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Okay, this is talking about a rapture, which is why I feel that chapter, and this is only a theory, okay, just like some of the things that Kent Holbein says, it is only a Holbein theory, well, this is just a theory of mine. 
but chapters 4 through probably 8, overlay 9 through 14. Oh, okay, I say eight because take a look at what happens in verse one and eight. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. Now, Kent Holbein sometimes makes a joke that says that men get to heaven before the women because it was silent. Mm. Yeah, it's a joke, okay? That is what that is one of the biggest difference between us Christians and uh, it is oh, 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 some Muslims is, is that we can joke around. Okay? And God knows that when it's a joke and he has a sense of humor. Okay? But it was silence for about a half an hour. And I feel that here in 14, after the time of the harvest, starts the Great Tribulation. Now, I have said all this so far. Actually, I have... Let me pause here to get back to the point that I am about to make here. Because this is an important aspect to understand... about the tribulation. Not of, yeah, that of the great tribulation and uh, why I strongly believe we, the church, will be raptured before the great tribulation. We all have small ones throughout our life, okay? But the earth will never have seen such tribulation as what will be in that time. But let me start with this. What is the church? We, the people, are the church. Matthew eighteen seventeen, And if he shall... Neglect to hear them tell, tell it unto the church. Um, <coughs> how are you going to talk to a building if you need to tell it to the church? The church is the people. All right. But if you neglect to hear the church, and what is and what is of the church building going to talk back? No, it is the people. Praising God and having favor with all of the people of the Lord added to the church. People added to the church. In Acts two forty seven, Acts five eleven. And great fear came, came upon the church, and upon as many as, as heard these things. Can a building literally hear? Does it have ears to hear? Does it have a brain to understand? And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was great persecution against the church. How can you persecute a building? Now then, 
probably a lot of Jews thought that the temple was persecuted the two times that it has been destroyed. And that is understandable. Because that is the earthly house of God, of Yahweh. Okay? It is not saying that Yahweh can be restricted to be living in the house, especially when he is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipresent. That means that Jesus or Yahweh, because we as Christians believe that Yahweh is Jesus, and Yahweh is a part of Elohim, at which that is the triuneness of God. But that is probably what a lot of Jews thought that the temple was then persecuted because it was destroyed twice. But that's not the true church. It is the people. Acts 11.22 Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church. Okay, ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. And they, who is they, the church, sent forth... Okay. Acts eleven twenty six, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that the whole year they assembled themselves with the church. How can they assemble with a building and taught much people? Acts 12, 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayers was made without cease, ceasing of the church. Can a building pray? And when they were come and had gathered the church together, how can you gather many buildings together? Okay, yeah, some of them was was probably nothing more than a tent. But still the point being, how can you gather buildings? Because not all of them was tents. Just a few. First... Colossians 1, 2, unto the church of God, which is in Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. How can a building be sanctified? It is just a building called to be saints. Okay, here is a mention that we Christians, the church, are saints. Unlike what the Catholic Church teaches, that you have to die and there has to be three uh, miracles associated with you and a few other things, okay? There's like five or six things that a person has to do. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Someone knocked on my door. So, let's get back to the many scriptures to prove that the church is the people. Because this is important about the point that I'm about to make. If therefore the whole church become together... 
okay the whole church if church is a building how can the whole church come together from throughout the area where the gospel has been spread now this is talking metaphorically about the people of the church coming together or even that of just the local church that is that is a second well that is the first meaning of this is the local church that of a secondary meaning is that it is metaphorical speaking about the whole church coming to, together all right but let's go on for i am the least of the apostles who is this first corinthians this is talking about paul and he says for i am the least of the apostles he says that he is the chief of sinners is not was so yes we christians unfortunately still sin it is our goal to be as as sinless as possible we are not going to be totally sinless because then that would make us god and we are not god but we can strive to be as close to sinless as possible that i am not meet to be called an apostle because i persecuted the church okay again how can you persecute a building or a tent you can only destroy a building or a tent but you persecute the people galatians 4 we have heard of my conversation and time past in the Jews' religion how that beyond measure I persecuted the church. Again, Paul is saying that in his time past when he was Saul, that he persecuted the people. Ephesians, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own husbands and everything. Okay? This is telling how we, the people, are subject unto Christ. Okay? Just as the wife is subject unto the husband colossians salute the brethren which are in laodicea and well i'm not going to try to mention that name and the church which is in the house okay this one paul distinguishes the church separate from a building This is probably the biggest evidence that the church is the people and not the uh, and not the building. Okay. Unto the church he then sends peace from God our Father and Savior and Lord Jesus Christ how do you give peace to a building the word church in the Greek New Testament is Ecclesia here it is in Greek Ecclesia and this is how you 
say it, Ecclesia. And I did not put the entire definition because a lot of it is that of the technical thing at which people studying Hebrew would need to know it. But I just copied over the primary part of the definition. Christian community of members on earth or saints in heaven. Well, it should be saints is also on earth too, not just in heaven. Or both. Shall I continue to prove that the that the ecclesia is the church. Instead, I am going to pause here with, what was it, four slides? Yes, one, two, three, four slides full of scripture that proves that the Ecclesia is the members. Now that we've got that, let us now go to, back to Revelation. With that in mind, doesn't Revelation verse, uh, chapters 2 and 3 come into a whole new understanding. Now, I haven't fully figured it out yet, but chances are John put the last part of this in code in Ephesus. But Here's one verse in Revelation chapter 2 that is going to show that the church will not go through the Great Tribulation. And it's verse 22. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Whoops. Except they repent of their deeds. Okay. Now. If this was to a literal church in John's time, this church must be still alive. Because the Great Tribulation has not occurred yet. Think about that. Here is the word, Great Tribulation. Unless if they repent. So, each one of these seven letters is talking about the attitudes of a Christian. Now, it could be that the church in Ephesus really did do all this, but 
this is also talking about the individuals at the end of time. If you do not repent, you will go through the Great Tribulation. Think about that. Now, again, now, I know that, I know that my uh, a brother, Hovind, have used Matthew 24 to then convince that Christians will be going through the Great Tribulation. But where in Matthew 24 is it saying the church? Take heed that no man deceives you, for many shall come in my name, and many has and has taught the wrong gospel. That is one of the things this channel will be addressing. Like Joyce Myers, Kenneth Copeland, a lot of these teacher preacher, uh, these here TV preachers, have been preaching the wrong gospel. They have been preaching a prosperity gospel, and nowhere in the Bible will you find the prosperity gospel, especially if you take a look at the couple of verses that they use and put it back into context. It's not saying what they are trying to make it say. Okay, back to this. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there uh, shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. This is happening right now. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Is that not what is happening right now? Even the United States is starting to hate Christians because we defy atheism. And then shall many be offend offended and shall betray one another. And many false prophets, and boy, there has been a lot of false prophets. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he thou shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Okay. Again, who is Jesus speaking to in Matthew 24? The Jews. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Sorry about that interruption. My son knocked on my door. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Okay. What it happens? And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached before the end. Abomination of desolation. Okay, so, back up. But he that shall endure shall be saved when it would appear to be just before the abomination of desolation.
When ye therefore shall see abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Okay, now, this can be talking about two different things. This can be talking about the third temple. Or, this can be talking about the Antichrist being revered as God in the hearts of Christians. Oops. Has, has not anyone thought about that part of this? It might be talking about a third temple. And from what I understand... There is a lot of preparation happening for the third temple. A lot of preparation. So, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Okay, see, in Judea, who is that? the Jews. See, Elohim, Yahweh, did not all of a sudden discontinue the covenant with the Jews. There is a new covenant to include the Gentiles, but God isn't finished with the Jews. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. At which, this is talking about women who are breastfeeding. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. See, in, in the end time, the Sabbath is still important right here proves the sabbath is still important but i have got a whole other video that proves the sabbath is still valid even all the way through to revelation 19 Okay, but this shows that even in the end times, the Sabbath is still important. For then, whoops, for then shall be great tribulation. The same wording as in Revelation 2.22 shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. Okay, do you see what I said earlier? I have, I have just said this just a few minutes ago, that the great tribulation will be so great that it has not been seen until that point. And except in those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. 
Every time we read the term elect in the Old Testament, who is it talking about? It is talking about the Jews. The Jews are the elect. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there is, believe it not. Why does he need to say this when we Christians know who is the real Christ? Because the Jews has not yet accepted that Christ in the first century was the real Christ, the Messiah. Many Jews has not come to accept that yet. So why is this here if it is to the Christians? For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and of course we have seen that, to deceive the very elect. Again, elect, Old Testament, talking about the Jews. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Okay, this is still talking about telling the Jews, don't believe any of these things that is about to happen that a person will deceive many proclaiming that he is Christ, that he is the Messiah, not a Messiah, because even King David was a Messiah, but not the Messiah. And sinneth even unto the west. Okay. For where. For wheresoever. The carcass is. There will the eagles be. Gathered together. Coming the son of man. Immediately after. The tribulation. Of those days. Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. Okay. It. Okay, this is seeing the Son of Man in the clouds of heaven with power and glory, and he shall send his angels trumpet and shall gather together his elect from the four winds. Okay, and the lesson of the fig tree. Okay. This right here ends it, which would then go to Revelation 19. Because if we read in Revelation 19, And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, A hallelujah, much people. Okay. Alrighty. Let me get to where
And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Who is the one that can judge? Jesus said that the Father gave him all authority. His eyes were as flame of fire, and his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed in a with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. That would be Logos. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean, that is, as Christians. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Okay, King of kings, Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, small and great. What is that talking about? Uh, everyone is about to die. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. And them that worshipped the image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. This is the final time that Jesus comes to earth. And the remnant were slain with the sword with him that sat upon the horse. All right. So this coincides with the near end of Matthew 24, just before the lesson of the fig tree. Okay. He is telling us in the parable, because he calls it parable at this point, not before this do you see the term parables. Okay, but only down here where it talks about the lesson of the fig tree. In other words, Jesus is saying... In short, if you look for the signs which is given, you will know when all this is about to happen. He goes on to say that no one knows the day or the hour. But of that day, no one knows no man, nor the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Theos only knows, but as the days of Noah were, that is what this is, no. Uh, whenever the word, or whenever the name Noah was translated into Greek, it could not translate all the way. 
so shall also the coming of the Son be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah, Noah, because we know because there's only one family that entered into the ark. Okay, so Noah. And knew not until, okay, and knew not until the flood came that took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Think about the story about Noah. Noah preached that a great flood was coming, and he told them to repent. We current preachers, some of us, are actually preaching that the time is at hand. Repent. 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 Or you are going to be left behind. Now, how, now then, how accurate is the series Left Behind is? I think, based on what I am studying, and I have studied the tribulation long and hard for several years, just like Kent Holbein have studied the young earth creationism for several years, uh, he has got uh just a couple of uh a couple of uh a decades on me on that part but i have studied intently prophecy he has studied intently about young earth creationism this doesn't mean that he shouldn't be listened to about everything else because he is a good preacher. This one thing, though, I am sorry, Brother Holbein, but you are wrong on this point. That we Christians are to be raptured before the Great Tribulation. Okay. Fairly I say unto you that he, he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Okay, this is talking about the servant who is faithful. Okay. Read back up here. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Let me get one thing straight here. We don't do things to be saved. We do things because we are saved. Okay, there is a difference. We do because we are saved. Ephesians 2 verses, verse 10. See, everybody wants to point out verses 8 and 9, but leave out verse 10. Well, you can't do that. Verses 8 and 9 says, We are saved by grace through faith, and not of works, lest any man should boast. But then verse 10 says, We are then therefore called to do good works. When? 
after we are saved. Okay. So, this is talking about the servant who is doing... He shall make him ruler over all his goods. Okay. Let's see here. What else does this say? I am. I am just looking over it. Okay, now then, note what is happening here. But, if an evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and he begins to smite his fellow servant, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder. Okay, Jesus said, Not everyone that calls me Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, right? Well, if we go back, we find out why... Not all will enter into the kingdom of heaven because they were not doing the things and the and therefore now I know that this may sound contradictory, but take a look at what is happening. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why? Because and appoint him his portion. Okay. This is saying that they will get to heaven. But he is going to weep and gnash his or her teeth because he sees his reward in heaven being small. But other people's rewards are great. Let me think of the verse. There is a verse that says all of our good deeds will be cast into a fire. And those things that are, that survive the fire, we will be rewarded for. Notice what is cast into a fire, not the lake of fire, but a lake of fire, our good deeds. And whatever comes out from the fire, we will be rewarded for in heaven. And if a person like this has no good deeds to speak of that survives that fire, guess what? His reward will be little. Yes, he will still be in heaven, but his reward is little. Let me pause here so I can try to find that scripture that I am thinking of.
Yes, I know I sometimes go a little bit longer than what is expected, but sometimes the Holy Spirit speaks and I follow the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 3.13 Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. The day. What day? Judgment. Because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. What work? Okay, if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Okay. This is one of the passages the Catholic Church uses to try to prove th that there is a um, oh I can't think of it now uh, that there is a purgatory but this is not saying that we will say, we we ourselves will be tried by the fire. Our works will be tried by the fire. So don't let the Catholic Church deceive you in saying that this is the verse that says we will be tried by fire in purgatory. No. Our works. Let's get that straight. Our works. So, understanding proper dispensation of Matthew 24, that it's talking to the Jews, and I have pointed several times it's talking about the Jews when it is talking about the elect. Okay. And with Revelation 2.22 telling at least one of the churches, which is the people, okay, telling a specific type of people in the end times that if you do not repent and turn away from those deeds, guess what? You are going to go through the Great Tribulation. The, the Great Tribulation starts late in chapter 14. So let's be sure we understand prophecy in its proper context. It takes... You can have a general overview understanding of it, but when it comes to details, it takes an expert to teach you and do not be afraid to ask someone like me about things, I am starting a guest speaker thing like Kent Holvine did early in his years that I am willing to come to different con to a to a to a different congregations and speak about in time prophecy. It takes, depending on how much that congregation wants to learn, it can take 7, 14 to 21 nights worth to have a, 7 nights would be a general understanding, 
14 to 21 would be a detailed understanding of Bible prophecy. If your congregation wants to have me to come and talk about Bible prophecy, I am very willing to go there and talk with your congregation. Just leave me a message and I will try to contact you. All right, so as much as Kent is very good at what he does, I'm sorry, but on this one respect, well, actually two, because I have also pointed out in Matthew 24 that even in the end time, the Sabbath is important. So, so technically, I have shown him in two spots, and so far, these are the only two spots that we need to reconsider. I have shown you the proof. Now, it is up to you to then say whether if you believe Dr. Holbein in these two aspects or if you believe what I have shown you in these two aspects. Have a blessed day, my brothers and sisters. So, when are you Muslims going to get it? There is a problem. No, not a. There are several problems, potentially counting into the hundreds of problems. about Islam. And I don't know if I will have the time to cover them all. Instead, why don't you come to the one that says in John fourteen six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. These are Jesus' words. You can't get to the Father by any other means. Not by me, not by Hatun, not by David Wood, not by Dr. Al-Fadi, not by Joel Osteen, not by... Anybody else that you can think of, not even through your Imam or Muhammad, the only way to heaven is by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who died and paid the penalty for our sins. Mark eleven twenty eight says, Come unto me, all, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, at which weary and labor means the same thing, and I will give you rest. Jesus wants to give you rest and peace, peace knowing, knowing that you are going to go to heaven. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Did you catch that? Believe in Jesus. Become baptized and put, and put your total faith in Jesus. Quran says, 354 and 830, that Allah is the best of deceivers. If he's the best of deceivers, how do you know he is not deceiving you? Think about that. If Allah is the best of deceivers, as 354 and 830 tells us that he is, because Allah admits to it, how can you be assured he is not lying to you? In 46 verse 9 of the Quran, Muhammad says that he does not know of his salvation and therefore cannot guarantee anybody else's. Wait a minute. Think about this, Mr. and Miss Muslim. Muhammad was the best example of a Muslim, and yet he does not know of his salvation. Jesus, the only begotten Son of the Father, have came to earth willingly just so he can pay for the penalty of sin. Are you ready to be a Christian? Jesus is waiting, but there isn't much time left. The end is drawing near. And you don't want to be left behind. When you are ready, I know of many Christians that would love to help you be saved, and I am one of them. We are not here to hate you. If we were, if we did hate you, we wouldn't be doing what we are doing. We would just let you be and keep the gospel to ourselves. Instead, Jesus said, there are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place. We all can live in heaven. We just need to accept. We just need to accept his invitation. Contact me when you are ready to give up Islam. Thank you, and have a great day. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. When you do, don't forget to click on all, because if you don't, you might not get notified of all of the videos, so make sure you click on all. And don't forget in the com 
in the description area. Please consider contributing to this particular ministry, either through Patreon or else through the PayPal. Both links are in the description box.